Right, I investigated buying some label holders online. And I really don't like what I've seen. So I'm going to try and make some wooden ones. And what I've done here is I've taken uh, and planed some oak, some red oak to match the facing of my um, bolt bin over there, jewelry box. And so they're all the same thickness and now I have to get this edge. One edge was already jointed. Now I need to get the other edge uh, jointed using my hand planes. So I use this jack plane to um, rough it down and then use this number, what is this? Number five and a half to finish it up. I've just got a few more strokes to go here. I've got it jigged up. And the reason I like this five and a half is because it's got a nice wide base here before the plane iron where this jack plane is a lot shorter. So that gives me the ability to capture all of these before the blade engages. And I've just been making strokes. So I'm happy with the final width. And I think that might be it right there. There was a spot down here that was still rough and now I think that's gone. So these all feel pretty good to me. So I'm going to take these out. Get my mallet here. And I really don't care what dimension that is, I just want them all to be fairly uniform. And that looks pretty good. So now I gotta get these jigged up and do the same thing. Now I've got these cleaned up. And my intention is to take these and just make, make a butt joint like this. Maybe a miter, I'm not sure yet. But before I do that, I've got to rabbit this to hold this thickness. I've got this sacrificial, I shouldn't say sacrificial, I've got this fence that I've made to make it wider to straddle work. What I'm going to do is cut an offset groove as wide as my piece so that the cutting blade will give me a rabbit about a little over half the width of this piece. I, I'm hoping that what that'll do is, first of all, it'll capture the piece and even though they've got up some pretty good bends in them, it'll keep it fairly straight as it runs through here. And then uh, I'll just gradually lower the bit. I don't only have to take about um, eight thousandths, I think it is, or ten thousandths, the thickness of a business card. So two very light passes, and I think that this will, this will suffice for what I need to have done. small ones slide perfectly I mean that's nice so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this setting where it's at and the the long ones all seem to be uh, fat in the middle so I'm gonna take the the first four inches and the last four inches and not run my plane over that and just give them the middle a couple of more passes and see how it looks. Good. I 
good. And I had to prove to myself this was going to work. So far, so good. This is my first piece. Uh, two runners on my sled to keep it up off of this, which has got a dado in it, the same size as the piece. So if I've got any curve in the piece, that'll take that out of it or warp. Uh, this is butted up against this piece, which is here, dogged here. This piece is dogged this way, so that's 90 degrees. And then this is just slightly larger than the width of this part of the sled uh, to keep it from going too far one way or the other. I'm, I'm trying to push this way, but... So that's a nice clean cut. I'm going to take a little bit more here. And being it's the first time I'm using this jig, I'm, I've got to come back here and cut this so that uh, it doesn't create any interference the next time I put a piece in here. That's a quarter of a turn. Pretty good sized bite out of that. Just below the surface of the holder. And incidentally, I've got a dog or a stop up here super glued in to keep it from getting away from me. Now, this part up here, yeah, just want to make sure I get that clean. No, I think that's pretty good. I want it to be a little deeper than a business card. And that's a little deeper. I'm going to have to fight it to get him in there. I think I might take one last cleanup pass here. Maybe a eighth of a turn. Pretty consistent. A couple of improvements. Put some wax on my runners on this side, two sides here, and some wax on this side as well. And when you go with the grain, it is a beautiful thing. Nice tight curl. When you go against the grain, it's a complete disaster. <laughs> that thing just dove in and broke. So, so far, that's the only one I've gotten wrong. Some jewelry arrived for my jewelry box. So some things I was lacking in, I, I ordered from McMaster Car. Bushings, uh, Locks, set screws, I guess that's about it. Yeah, just different different things. What you see there though is about a hundred dollars worth of stuff. McMaster Car is not the cheapest place on the planet, but they they've never failed me. They everything I always order I get and I get it uh, the next day. And shipping is reasonable. The first one is in the books and it's uh, pretty strong actually the glue joint I'm not gonna break it apart but hopefully you can see this uh, I, 
the glue reacted with my machinist plate here that I have. Uh, this was given to me by August in uh, I, I don't use it very often, but in this case it comes in real handy. So when I glue this, just a butt joint glue joint here, uh, the, the glue reacted with the plate. So I'm going to put some tape on here. And the other thing I had to form my angle, let me grab those quick. were these machinist standoffs. Now, yeah, here, the glue also reacted with this as well. So I kind of sanded off that a little bit. I need to come up, need to get some more off there. I can still feel it. So I'm going to tape these edges. I'm going to set this up so I think I can do two at a time. And what I did was you get your magnet here. Let me do that. And that just sucks it right in. So there's your there's your clamping jig right there. And I use this one to uh, put tension on it. I'm going to try and figure out something so that I can have Two of these set up at a time, maybe one back here, and figure out a way to uh, tension that. All right, this will well, work. So I can this this mag switch off of my a micro adjuster for my uh, table saw fence. I just it it just sits in there, so I can pull it out. I can glue the right angle together here, or glue. <laughs> magnetically hold it with this type of magnet. I can't use it for a right angle because it's it's got these rounded edges on it. But it does work, uh, has enough holding capacity to go through the steel to the plate. And I can bring this up once I get glue on there, press against it enough, and then lock it in. And that'll hold it together. That'll, that'll work. All right, let me get things taped off. So, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shorten this long piece by 7 16 of an inch and the short piece is by a quarter. Now, before I do that I want to make sure it's going to work so I'm going to find a piece of scrap plywood put super glue on these ridges I'll put the thin stuff on here then I'll spray activator on here and make sure that I can press and hold it. This doesn't take a lot of glue, so I'm just going to put a little dot of glue on this credit card. Maybe. I'll push that first application into the pores a little bit and then hit it again. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out if it's necessary to put glue on both pieces. I don't think it is, but we're going to find out here. Lock that one in. Okay. Got another set to go. I'm going to make some more. Um, let me 
give this actually you know what I'm gonna hold off making any until I get these two out of here get that glue any glue squeeze out where the cards gonna slide in get that out of the way okay Contemplating using super glue, but I know that if I do, I'll end up putting a finished glob on there that I don't want. So I'm going to stick with this method. I know it's slower, but it gives me the look I want. So I'll let these sit. It's uh, what time is it here? It's 11:36. So. I'm Come back about noon and see how these look. All right, this is taking a little longer than I thought, but I wanted to show you my process here. I got a piece of scrap. This has been uh, face jointed, uh, and then this edge is square. So I'm I'm pretty certain this will turn out to be square enough. I guess I'll put it that way. Took the time to drill three pilot holes on the other side. And then, yeah, uh, then I squirted up uh, one inch off of this line, or off of this cut. I drew a line one inch. Okay. So, you know, looks like I can get two, well, I can get all three of them here. So I'm going to drill these pilot holes. I'm going to get a VIX bit for this. Uh, touch these and drill pilot holes. Be right back. Looks good. There. Okay. So I'll figure out where I want it. There's my other line I believe that I'm going to use for the uh, larger drawers. I'll move this back here. But I want to see how this is going to work with a small drawer. Hang on. Alright, so you get some idea what I can do here clamp it like this use this as my ridge as my corner um, the only other thing I need to determine is how far uh, up this way and so I'll I'll figure that out and put another stop in here so 3 8 from the bottom that gives me 3 8 from the bottom of this pole so when that cards in there there'll be an equal reveal all the way around this uh, card holder. All right, I got a new tip. There goes drawer number one. Right to the corner and drop it down. And hold. cap on.
It looks really good. Let's check it for center here. Perfect. This should be seven eighths. Just a hair over. Well, that's just a hair over three eighths. That's good. Okay, I like it. Now I think now that I've got it on there. I'm going to give this a light sand. I was doing this on my uh, steel plate over there, but it didn't make any sense. What I did do was these edges, these three edges, but this flat is just going to be so much easier just to do it here. It's locked in place and uh, ready to go. This one's nearly flush, or this one is flush, this one's nearly flush. There you go. There you go. <laughs> nice. That is nice. I didn't think I'd like it that much, but I do. And I'm getting a little bit better at this, but I'll show you a modification I made to the jig in a minute here. Oh, the jig. So I get a little super glue that leaks out around the edges. You can probably see that. And it was it was catching and gluing to the jig. So I just took and ran a chamfer along this edge on both these edges, and that you saw there. The jig lifted off nice and clean, no problem. So. Uh, I'm happy with that. Now these this part that leaks out a little bit. If I take and run a chisel here. Clean that up pretty easy. In this cross grain, when I'm going against it, I got to be a little careful. Just if there's big pieces there, I'll pluck them off of there. Okay, so that one's down pretty solid. I'm going to get some 150. This 220 is just taking too long. Yeah. Hard. Protect the cross grain there. I don't know anyone 
It'll be admiring the sanding job. Some of these drawers are going to be hard to empty, so I'm going to do this one fully loaded. And see how it goes. I wanted to show you what one of these looks like. Uh, you can see the, I hope you can, the rabbit here. And the opening is on the bottom, so you won't really see that when it's on the drawer. Matching rabbit on the long one, and then again on this side. So they're, they're glued together with just a butt joint. And all I'm, all I'm asking that glue to do is to keep these uh, together. You can see I have to squeeze out here, but I'm going to take care of that shortly. Just keep them together until I can get them super glued to the front face. So, I, I'll set that down here, put my jig on. Clamp it. Whoop. Put my jig on. <laughs> Clamp it. And just to make sure that it's not cockeyed, I do clamp it on this side and, you know, push it up here, make sure it's tight. And that way I know that this is registering straight now. So then it's time for the glue. So now it's ready for the label. And believe it or not, I've got what I call marbles and springs in here. There are actually some ball bearings and some marbles. What? That tells me what's in the drawer. And then back into the case. So you can see. Oh, I have my label there. This one I've got, I don't have a label for it yet. And this one I do, wooden parts. This one will be labeled drawer parts. Uh, I don't have labels for these type of screws, pan head screws. But now I know where stuff is. Quarter 20 flathead bolts are Right here for my, uh, you know, any jigs that I make for for my fence or and extrusions. Here's my some more quarter there, quarter twenty flathead T nuts set screws. So no more pulling a drawer out and guessing what's in it. Thanks for watching.